Keith Lee Fu reviews have done a lot of good for struggling businesses. A good Keith Lee review has taken multiple struggling restaurants with almost no customers to having lines outside before they even open. POV, the Keith Lee effect on our small mom and pop shop. The lines are out the door. So when Keith Lee went to Dallas, we thought it would be much of the same. A struggling restaurant called Sweetly Seasoned had made a video reaching out to Keith Lee and asking him to come and visit their restaurant and give them a food review to help them out. Keith Lee is officially in Dallas. So I asked him for help and come to visit my mom's food truck to hopefully turn it around. She is an award-winning pastry chef. And she is a culinary chef. She has two degrees. We are just from Milwaukee and here in Dallas, it's kind of hard with the marketing because we don't know our way even around. The begging actually worked. Keith Lee popped up and gave them a food review. Now, the Keith Lee food review wasn't the best food review because I've seen Keith Lee gave 9.5s and 10s, but he gave them a good review and it actually initially boosted up their business. Let me speak for itself. You can make a beautiful crust like that and then cover it with sauce. Just how it looks. I feel like this is about to be the highlight. These are jerk tacos. There's some jalapenos, there's some pico de gallo, look like some onions, cheese. Mm -hmm. I did. That sauce might be homemade. That sauce is good. It's just a chicken taco. It's a great chicken taco, though. It's seasoned. That sauce is spicy. 8.7 out of 10. Right, them rice by my hand. Just rice. Them the beans. What you give it? 8.7. Keith Lee was feeling good that day. Because not only did he pop up impromptu and gave them a good food review, but Keith Lee also gave them some money. Now, I don't know if he pulled up and seen the restaurant was in some pretty bad shape, so he wanted to help them out, but he gave them $4,000 out of his pocket. I appreciate y'all for having me. I see y'all giving out haircuts and doing braids. So we want to leave $1,000 to the barber so we can cut everybody here for free. We want to leave you $1,000 because we took the hair. We want to leave you $2,000. Yeah, I appreciate it. So I see you starting my barber for $4,000 and y'all but no good deed goes unpunished and here's where the messy stuff starts you see keith lee gave four thousand dollars out of the goodness of his heart but he also instructed what the four thousand dollars was for keith lee gave the barber who was outside cutting people hair he gave him a thousand dollars so he could give people free haircuts he also gave the lady who was doing braids another $1,000 so she could continue doing braids for free. And then he tipped the restaurant itself $2,000, but Keith Lee also left about 800 bucks for her to give people free food. So Keith Lee left thinking that he just did a good deed and essentially, you know, he just helped his restaurant get back in business. But Keith Lee wouldn't know that that particular gesture would be a nightmare for that particular restaurant because that will be the beginning to the end for that restaurant's future. What's up, y'all? I bet you're wondering how we got here. Well, let me tell you. So a lot of y'all know yesterday I got to meet Keith Lee. Great. Congratulations. I'm still humbled by the experience. Like, I am ecstatic. Blessings to your family. I really appreciate you. But now this is where the downfall comes in. A lot of y'all was on my live when he said this. I see y'all giving out haircuts. Hi, little brother. Yeah. And he wants to leave a thousand dollars to the barber so he can cut he, everybody. Oh, that's food. my little brother. He wants to go pick up my baby brother for but school. We want to leave you a thousand dollars to do it. To here. We want to leave you two thousand dollars. And granted, everything was cool, right? Me being me and thinking everybody else is going to have the same genuine heart as me, I charged him four thousand dollars on his car, meaning all the money went to the food truck in hopes that she would do what she needed to do, right? wrong so after everything had died down mind you on top of him tipping four thousand dollars this man left an extra eight hundred and eighty six dollars to feed everybody else that was coming right right but this is where she went wrong i'm in the truck mind you i'm a worker this is your business so i'm doing what you say she tell me after this person which is the third person that you got to start charging again this is why a lot of you guys get in your own way and don't win in life because y'all block your own blessings keith lee came and gave this owner $4,000, $2,000 for herself, and $800 to feed customers for free. Instead of her doing that, she's now charging the customers once Keith Lee leaves. 
Yo, just outright greed. Like, why? Not only are you disobeying and outright scamming the man who came and gave you the biggest blessing of your business history, but you're also passing up on an opportunity to get relations with customers, build our rapport, and give them a free meal. It's a marketing opportunity that you pass up across because you wanted to pocket a funky $800 after you already got $2,000 for free. It's insane and it's just outright stupid. And I looked at her and I was like, so Keith Lee literally just spent $5,200 with you. She was like, girl, I know I'm so excited. Like before I got on here, I was broke. So everything was cool, calm and collect, right? She told me, she said, look, I just want to let you know it'll be about a day or two before you guys get your money. I work with Square. I've been running my business for the past four years with Square. So I know exactly how it works. But if you've been running this business for years, your money going to clear the next day. Correct? So this morning we got to, mind you, I'm thinking I got to go back to help her because yesterday you ain't have nobody that wanted to work for you. So I hit her this morning was like, Kim, you have workers today? Also, there's a guy who's wanted to do your menu and flyers for you, so I'm sending him your number. Who is this? Sherelle. Yes, I have workers for today and you can send me his info. Thank you. That was it. So I respond back. I will send you his Instagram and did you see if your money cleared? You can keep the money that was left for me, but my brother is preparing to leave and go back home and I'm unsure how he'll get it once he leaves. Granted, all I had to do was send it to her or she could have sent it to him, whatever. She said, please call me back so an agreement can be made. But before we even got to those messages, she called me and she was just like, well, I didn't invite your brother to come out there and cut hair. I didn't invite you. My son invited you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give $1,000 to my son and he'll give y'all whatever it is he see fit out of there. This is so trifling and disgusting. Like, how greedy can you be? Like, are you this much of a POS? Like, how broke were you really? Keith Lee came and gave $1,000 to the barber specifically, $1,000 to this chick who was doing hair and made in the POS system specifically, and $2,000 to the owner specifically. This is why we never prosper. We're always in our own way. Like, she gave her son $1,000, kept $3,000 for herself, and then told her son, hey, whatever you want to do with your $1,000, you can do with it. If you want to give those two people, the barber and the chick doing hair, if you want to give them a couple hundred dollars, you do you, but I'm going to keep all the money for myself. Hold on, ma'am. Hold on. Now, I did you a solid by saying, I get money. When I opened my eyes this morning, I had a deposit for $1,500. You get what I'm saying? And I made money since. So I, I told you to keep my money, but I was more so pressed about the issue of my brother. They was done so grimy, and what's even worse is that Sweetly Seasoned, the restaurant, uh, the lady has a son, and Sherelle is the son's friend, and Sherelle volunteered to come and help that lady out for free, not expecting any payment whatsoever. So essentially, they burnt, like, a saving grace. Somebody who was willing to work for free and help them out, they burnt her. But once Sherelle actually took to Facebook to expose Sweetly Seasoned, the post began to circulate and go viral. So the owner decided that she was going to speak up and speak out and explain exactly why she's keeping all the money for herself. He wasn't with me. Keith Lee, I heard he thought that they were my kids. They're not my kids. Th those were my son friends. But this ain't even about money, y'all. This is about the principle. How dare you come and make it seem like this was something that it wasn't. You were supposed to be out there to support Sweetly Season, a struggling business. And then you turn around and make it seem like it was something that it wasn't. I dare you. I dare you. And yeah, for everybody, I'm just, I'm getting emotional because y'all have no idea how much work and effort I put into my business. And I don't know if this is going to make me or break me. I don't know, but I know I got God. And God is the one that told me to go to school. The gaslight in here is crazy. This is truly psychotic behavior. She's getting emotional and shaming uh, Sherelle for making videos, bringing awareness to how she was scammed and her brother was scammed by Sweetly Season. It's as if she really convinced herself that she's the victim. Now, her defense of herself and her business is she claims that Keith Lee gave her $4,000 for her and her business and Keith Lee told her to divide up the money however she see fit. When that's not the case. Keith Lee said on camera, give the barber a thousand and give the lady doing hair a thousand and keep two thousand for yourself. He never stated that you should keep the whole four thousand dollars. I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. 
And if I'm wrong, I want Keith Lee to tell me. After him knowing the truth now, if that man tell me to give them the money, I'll give it to him. Because I've been doing, I'm in for doing the right thing. If he tell me to give them that money, knowing that they was not with me, and and just to let y'all know she's a scammer. She's trying to paint this picture that Keith Lee gave her the $4,000 for her business and that the girl and her brother are not employees of her business, so she doesn't owe them a goddamn thing. Now, she even says that if Keith Lee tells her to give them the money, that she would. But then she also tried to gaslight and says, if Keith Lee tells me to give them the money, knowing that they weren't with me, I'll give them the money. Essentially saying, even if Keith Lee tells her to give them the money, that Keith Lee is still in the wrong because they weren't with her. Like, bro, they were at your business helping you do work. And Keith Lee came and tipped them. It's insane, right? But she got her wish. Keith Lee responded back to her video. To be honest, there's not much to talk about. But there are a few conflated and confused things that's going around about the situation. So let's talk about them. Three days ago, me and my family went to Sweetly Season Food Truck. Number one. Nobody had any idea we was coming. They found out we was in Dallas like everybody else found out we was in Dallas because we was posting videos in Dallas. So in hopes of us coming, they had t-shirts made and they was on live all day. So me and my family went in cahoots with none of this. We was all under the impression that they were a team and this was a normal routine for them. The barber being there, the braider being there, family being there, a lot of people being there. This is our first time here. We are customers. We have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Number two, I was never under the impression that haircuts was free. Again, my family was watching the lives. We knew that he was cutting hair for $40. So when we walked up and I said, I want to get $1,000 to the barber to do free haircuts and $1,000 to the braider to braid hair, it was because in the original video, the son said it was slow due to marketing. Keith Lee confirmed that, yes, the money was intended for the barber and the chick who was doing hair, <laughs> not all for you. And he even explained that the reason why he didn't just give each individual money was because a he didn't know they all didn't know each other like that and then two he didn't have cash on him he had to pay through the pos system which he always does and the reason why i didn't pay everybody individually the interaction that you see looked longer than what it was it was really only like a five minute interaction within that five minutes 30 to 40 people pulled up they was pulling up in droves that parking lot was getting deep fast and for me and my family safety in general i don't ever carry cash around and nine times out of ten if we tip we always do it through the pos system and even if we wanted to do it a different way, Zelle and Apple Pay wasn't an option because it was four or five people at the same time on live. So for safety reasons, they wouldn't be able to say their phone numbers or their personal information out loud. And as far as them taking my phone and putting their number in on Zelle themselves, I wouldn't hand them my personal phone to nobody. So the POS system was the option that made the most sense. I've learned through this journey that sometimes it's deeper than the food, it's deeper than the marketing, it's deeper than the customer service. And this is one of those cases in my opinion. Sweetly Season got a lot to figure out, and I thank God in advance that they do figure it out. The last thing I'm going to touch on is the son is misconstruing something that I said, and I don't appreciate it. After I said out loud in detail what we deemed the money to be used towards, I also said y'all can divvy it out how y'all feel necessary. Meaning, after the money hits because it's a POS system, it don't hit the same day. Y'all can send it out through Apple Pay, through Zelle, through Cash App, through Check, through Cash Keep Lee shut down the sham of an explanation that those two scammers of Sweetly Season try to put out. Right? They try to make it seem like the barber... Uh, and the hair braider was capping, right? She, right? she even called them scammers. Well, no, the only scammer <laughs> was the owners. The owners was the one who was out here scamming. They even tried to misconstrue Keith Lee's words in which he just clarified it up. Now, as soon as Keith Lee confirmed that Sherelle and her brother was telling the truth and the owners are actually the real scammers, well, the business ratings began to plummet as people began to turn on them. Mind you, this all took place within a three-day window. They was at the mountaintop of their business history when Keith Lee came through and boosted up their business and gave them $4,000. And by the third day, well, their business reviews and ratings was looking like this as the people turned on them. How dirty can you be to pray with this man and do him dirty like that? I could tell by the 1.8 stars that you were doing awful before he got there. He really could have helped your ass up. Listen, as the Haitians like to say, wapcorn joy. Karma came back so quick. I hope you know how to budget and save. Heard the son is a TikToker. That career gonna be gone by. I don't know if he could come back from this. Out. <laughs> Saw a lot of people saying, oh, I hope Keith Lee don't stop doing the food tours because of all the negative things that keep happening. Listen, you gotta take the good with the bad. You can't let a couple of negative things stop you from doing God's work. Just think of him as the internet version of Gordon Ramsay or John Taffer. So at this point, Sweetly Season is after, right? Like, it's over for them. Now, they try to do some damage control by putting out a video where the owner even looks reluctant in the video and annoyed. 
as if like we're bothering her <laughs> by asking her to do what's right. But the owner made a video where she told the lady and her brother they can come and pick up their $1,000. Nobody is coming. Like, this is not the fairy tale story we all thought it would be, but nobody is coming. And now she's begging people to pull up because her business has gone back to the deplorable state that it was in before Keith Lee came, right? It's going back to having no customers. Now, at this point, I'll be real, her business is in a worse state than it was before Keith Lee because now people are not showing up just out of pure hatred for you. At first, people weren't showing up because they was not aware of the business. Right, due to poor marketing or whatever. But now people are saying, I'm going out of my way not to eat at that place because they are horrible people. But y'all let me know in the comment section, what do you guys think about this? And if you're still watching, click on this video here somewhere on my screen to find out how Charleston White just got exposed yesterday. Click on this video here to find out what I'm talking about. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.